we go up here, there's some stuff to explore. It actually took me uh, a couple run-throughs of this room to realize that there's a guy there. I seriously never noticed that. Also, I see you there. Uh, there's some files in here we can read, I know that. Stewart's Valediction. Master Alex, it has truly been an honor and a blessing to have served under you these past few decades. I consider myself lucky to have been witness to your scientific genius and your vision of the future. The world does need order, and I believe it is you, and only you, who is capable of accomplishing this feat. I, as well as the other researchers, are all bonded together in this belief. To ensure your survival, we have worked tirelessly to complete the transfer procedure. The vessel we have selected is without fault. I have every confidence that the procedure will go flawlessly. To come this far, we've had to make countless sac- I can't read that because Stuart's valediction is in front of it. My faith in your vision is resolute, so I prepared myself to shoulder the mental and emotional burdens of the sin that I would be committing. But I do believe that before your plan can succeed, we must first atone for our sins. So I have taken the necessary steps for atonement. The remaining researchers have all been dealt with, and I too shall soon follow. This will also help you to perform the procedure without any distractions. On behalf of those who have served faithfully by your side, we are grateful for the opportunity to help you accomplish your ambitions. Eternally your loyal servant, Stuart. So that's Stuart there. He's kind of like Alfred, only he's a little fucked up. But as we all know, Alfred wants so a little boy play with a robot the size of a tangerine. Crazy how that just worked out, didn't it? Instructions for Stuart. Stuart, the samples have arrived from Africa. The infection rate is extraordinarily high. It has a lot of potential. I should have expected nothing less from a fellow Wesker. Get this to the research chief and have the staff start working on it immediately. It's only a matter of time before T. Phobos is completed. I have everything I need for the final stage of my plan. See, so yeah, T. Phobos is uh, the name of the the virus in this game. And I believe it's named after a god. I think a Greek god. I want to say it's as simple as it's the Greek god of fear, which is you know it fits for the the uh, the game because it's all about a virus reacting to fear. So, if it was Phobos, and he was the god of fear, that makes sense. God damn, Moira. Are, are, why are you so bad at that uh, being my light? Like, seriously. Alright, so I didn't get lost or anything. I was just kind of looking around to see if there were any other boxes to collect. Still no sign of your boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend. Alright. Shit. Look. There's something I gotta tell you. I noticed something when Neil was with us. His bracelet never changed color. I mean, the living dead were coming at us from all directions. He must have been scared. No. No, no. There's no way. Got it? End of discussion. I kind of figured there was a, something a little fishy about Neil, too. Well, I think we'll trust Claire's judgment. She does know him better than anyone else in the game, after all. And it's not like he wanted there to be like a, a viral outbreak or anything like this. He's not like... It's not like he's in the FBC or anything like that. Alright, is there anything else to read? There's that. Here's this. A letter to my compatriots. My... Fellow visionaries, the time has finally come. Everything has gone as I said it would. All that remains is for her to hold up her end of the bargain, and then I can finish what we started seven years ago. Just one little sample is all I need to change the world. But the world is already changing, and not in a good way. The latest incident in Africa is just proof. This kind of madness will keep repeating itself until nothing is left but tragedy and despair. The world needs someone to take charge and lead it through these dark times. Lansdale was right, of course. What he tried to do in Terra Grigia, people call him a villain, but he's a hero. He was trying to save us. 
I understood that as you do. Oh my god. Holy crap. I'm will do. I'm will do whatever it takes to realize his vision. He was he was the only one to see that sacrifices were needed and that something good can be built on them. Even if it means dealing with the devil herself to do it. There are a lot, a lot of typos in these, um... These, uh... uh notes in this game. Wait, let's just remove that. Uh, whoops. Let's get the capacity back. I do wanna... Because we're gonna have a boss battle coming up. Let's do that. Damage level 1, damage level 2... One. And that's that. What's that? That looks like a death note. Is that a death note? Let's write Wesker's Splits. name in it. Neil had it at the party. Barton, Chavez, Redfield. It's got all our names on it. <gasps> he sold Tara Safe out. <sighs> Claire, I'm really sorry. <sighs> hey. Look. <sighs> All right. I've isolated the best candy. Good work. Now it's your turn to fulfill your end of did you? Well, you wanted an Ouroboros sample, now you've got it. Lap dog. You don't know shit about me. I know you were Lansdale's puppet. When Veltro incited the Terra Grigia panic seven years ago, the FBC was pulling the strings. The old man went down, but he was smart enough to pass the torch before he did. You played me. Because you're an idiot. You thought you could create a new terrorist threat to justify the FBC. A monster like you could never understand! Claire? Are you crying? No. I'm... I'm just learning to see a little more clearly. Neil's candidate list. Stuart, I've put together the list of TerraSave members who are most suited for this round of trials. They all have had experience dealing with bioterror and viruses. Their psyche valves came out with flying colors. They faced some unspeakable horrors and came out in one piece, indicating a strong resistance to emotional trauma. Number six hasn't been directly involved in any bioterror incidents, but her test results were promising, so I included her as well. All things considered, I think this is a pretty strong list of candidates. I'm sure you'd agree. It's all in your hands now. I'll be out there as backup in case you need anything. Fisher, Neil, Redfield, Claire, Chavez, Gabriel, Foley, Gina, crossed out. Burton, Moira, Fernandez, Pedro, crossed out. Corda, Natalia, crossed out. Thompson, Edward. And number six was Moira that they were talking about. So yeah, Neil is... Uh, now, I guess, the, the head of uh, the FBC, which is uh, pretty much what uh, Revelations 1 was about, stopping the FBC and figuring out the, uh, the big conspiracy there, so that, that's, a, that's another cool way of tying the games in together. Ah! <laughs> 
There's no bringing the FBC back. I failed plan Ouroboros! It's not death! It's... So this is probably my favorite boss in the game with uh, mutated Neil here. Uh, the deal with Neil right now, uh, that was an unintentional rhyme, but uh, the deal with him right now is that he has fused with Ouroboros, which is pretty cool. I like that Ouroboros plays a big part in this game, although it does seem kind of lazy because there's a you know it's about a Wesker that tries to do something with uh, Ouroboros. It just seems kind of like. Didn't we already see that? But yeah, I don't mind it. Because it it feels very much so like an epilogue of Resident Evil 5. Which I think is cool. Ow. Uh, Neil is not very tough. He doesn't really do all that much damage, but he will attack you a lot. What you want to do is you really want to get him close to uh, things that blow up. Like those, uh, that thing that he blew up before. And then he'll start to kind of get all flamey like he's doing right now. Art. So what we want him to do is attack one of these things right now. Like that. Then eventually he's going to catch on fire and he's not going to be doing so good. I'm burning up! So now he's going to go for the closest water source, which is this right here. And then we will have our best chance at attacking him. Also, I noticed that the picture was getting a little fucky, so I had to restart uh, this part over again. So if the, the picture is all weird and, like, artifacting, then sorry. Uh, I'll try and fix that for when I go into Barry's thing, but I think it should be fine now. Attack this thing, bud. And yeah, he looks like Nemesis, only fat. And also, uh, with Ouroboros. What is happening over there? There we go. You're an idiot, Neil. Yeah, Ouroboros works pretty much exactly like it does in, in Resident Evil 5. Uh, especially its weakness, because fire is it was its weakness. That was how you took care of Ouroboros a lot in Resident Evil 5, and that's pretty much how you want to deal with it in this game, too. Which I think is pretty cool. It's consistency. Whoa. Yeah, the dodge is your best friend in this fight. That should do it. This, the way that you want to... Oh, no, never mind, he's going up there. Because sometimes he'll jump up, and then he'll jump back down at you. Yeah, come down here, please. But yeah, he'll jump up and then he'll jump down, and the way that you're supposed to know where to go is um, based on, like, he'll there'll be, like, little Ouroboros things coming down from the ceiling. Oh, you know what? Damn it. Come on. Also, this is one of my favorite songs in the game. I said this game doesn't have a great soundtrack, but when it does have good songs, it has really good songs, so... I hear you, Neil. I just don't see you. Oh, hi. 
Where is there? All right, we can go over here. Nope. Oh, I see you. It's very odd that you only get two bullets at a time for the Magnum. That does almost no damage, so it's not like a big deal if you get hit by that. God, that piano though. Yeah, this is another one of those places where the game wants you to win, so it'll keep giving you ammo. If he could come down here. Sometimes he can grab you through things. Like, I've been grabbed through one of these before. There's probably a glitch, but I don't know. Come down here, dude. You're merely postponing the inevitable. There's no point in hiding. Ah, there you are. Alright, get over here. Attack this thing. You idiot. His AI is pretty shit. So is mine, apparently. Now, there's no more, um... blow up -y things, I don't think. Yeah, no, I think we're all out of those. Oh, where'd he go? Why is he over there? Down he goes. I just want this to be over. Uh, before we leave, let's check this area for items. And I want to point out that this next bit is actually super important. If you want to get the best ending of the game. Yeah, this game has multiple endings. For the first time in a Resident Evil game, I'm pretty sure. There's other endings based on like what character you play as first in other games, but never... I want to say never, like, just a full-out other ending if you don't do something. Resident Evil 3 was pretty open-ended, but this is, like, to a different level. So, what I want to say is switch to Moira at a point, and you will get the good ending. That's all I'm going to say. We have her now. Apparently, this is our stop. Let's see what's outside. Like, we don't know what's gonna happen. Shocker. So, switch to, to uh, Moira in this part. Otherwise, you get the bad ending for some reason. So, yeah, essentially, Moira works past her fear of guns. Just 
clarify, Moira just said, go jump on a dildo, boss. Nothing will come between us now, my sweet. You and I will be good friends. 